Hey everyone, okay, so today uh, I'm showing you the compost station here at the Old Mill, which is a restaurant and a farm. And it's pretty interesting, all the adventure, the composting adventures that I have here. All right, so first, first things first, uh, last week's post about uh, burning out, burnout, uh, mental health, and uh, struggling in farming was really popular. There's a lot of people that share their comments, so I wanna salute everyone for being so uh, empathetic and open. And I just feel that our community is amazing. So, you know, just like kudos to everyone that's farming out there and all the farm supporters, you guys are so important. So that's pretty cool, and that's a that's a topic that we'll keep talking about for sure in the next forever. <laughs> so that's that. But today we're at, we're at my composting station, and first I, I need to say that you know I'm not a compost expert. For all these farming years that I've been that I have under my belt, um, you know I've always bought compost from the outside. Like market gardening, in my mind, is about small you know one acre, two acre micro farming and we didn't have the resources to turn the compost pile to make the compost pile we didn't have manure and we didn't have except for the crop residues that we always leave on site using a flail mower and tarps we didn't have that much residues to make a pile here at the old mill it's different because we have a restaurant and the restaurant has a lot of waste a lot of food waste and you know it'd be silly to throw that away and not compost it because the farm is on site so my game plan is to make compost with the crop residue and with other material that i have at hand and to make it as diverse as possible and i'm going to show you what we do so again come back in a year uh, this is probably going to be better but that's the starting point so this is my main compost bin uh, all the cooks and the people from the kitchen, they'll come here to dispose of their food waste, uh, and there's a lot of it. So what I did is I gave them the responsibility of not only, you know, dropping their, their food waste, their scrap here, but also to cover it. Just like if you're in an outhouse, anytime you drop a food scrap, you need to cover it with brown. So green being covered with brown, brown being either that that uh, ramule wood chip that I have here or straw or both and I'll come every now and then and mix and spice the compost pile with uh, either uh, already compost that's already made with ha which is rich with a lot of bacterias compost tea leftovers I'll put it there I'm also mixing uh, soil amendments uh, basalt rock phosphate and I'm also putting charcoal so as biochar and that for me is the pile and then I have a tractor here because we needed to do a lot of excavation there's a lot of snow removal so we have a tractor here on the farm and I'm gonna turn it a few times measure the temperatures make sure that we're reaching the the, the good temperatures and once that's done I'll just put it in another pile cover it with straw and that's what I'll be using in the in the market garden so Pretty simple process, we're not reinventing the wheel. Uh, and it works, so far it's been good. So far we didn't have any uh, food inspection agents or anything come in and saying, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with the results. And what that I'm not so happy yet is that I think, I, it kind of still looks kind of hairy and clunky. Um, and we have a lot of customers here and I just needs to be like tight and, and nice. But that's the overall kind of process. So this pile now, uh, I'm gonna turn it. That's gonna be one of the things that I do today. These are my ingredients that I lay, lay in. Uh, almost every week I'll come. So basalt and rock phosphate here. And then this is the charcoal. And it's pretty controversial right now when you Google, you know, can you use charcoal as biochar? You know, there's epic battles going on on the internet. I did a lot of my research 
And first I found out that a lot of the people that were strongly against using, you know, charcoal uh, as biochar, you know, most of them do sell biochar. So that's, that's one thing. And from my research, and we can, we'll post it, we'll post some of my research on this, on this YouTube post, but you know, if you're using charcoal that's wood, 100% natural wood, hardwood, and it has no additive, additive? What's the word? Additive. Additive, it has no additive, uh, you know, you're okay. It's not as good as, you know, good biochar that's well made because of the temperatures, the heating temperatures. I think it's called py pyro pyrolysis or something like that. I don't, just don't remember the word right now, but it's like heating the, the coal, the lumps uh, at, at high temperatures without any oxygen. Um, you know, the process to make biochar, the heating is much higher and then it has more porosity. So there's more, there's more, ho more holes and it's just gonna suck in more nutrients. I think everybody knows what biochar is. Uh, it's interesting, you know, if you don't know about biochar, you can check it out. There's a lot of people that are super stoked about it. I think it's fun, uh, but that's kind of what I think about it. It's pretty fun. I'm not sure that it completely revolutionizes the farm. Uh, in my opinion, this is like the last 5% where you put, you put your attention to, because even if you have the best biochar in the world on in your soil, doesn't mean that you'll sell more at market, doesn't mean that you're gonna have more yields in your greenhouse, doesn't mean that, you know, your vegetables will be, you know, 20, 30% more, you know, nutrient dense or better or whatever. So this, these are incremental strategies that you put in the market garden, but, but it's interesting. It's super interesting and for me, what I wanna do is mix as much as I can in the pile, the compost pile, and then we're adding that into the soil. And, and that's kind of my philosophy. It's like, I'm not geeking out on one specific strategy. I'm mixing all of them. I'm not measuring too much of that, except for the temperature of the compost pile when I turn it. Uh, but that's interesting. And it's probably gonna open a debate and I think it's a good one. Uh, in my opinion, this is 100% natural and we use a lot of it uh, in the barbecues, we have two outside barbecues here at the restaurant and uh, I, I'm excited to mix it in. So, you know, if, if you think that that's not okay and you have proof about that, I'd like to hear it. But in my opinion, this works. I just want to crush it a bit more so that it's more powdery. Uh, and yeah, basically this is my main tool for the process. This is my therm thermometer. It's a, it's a soil thermometer. I use it in the spring when I wanna make sure that my soils are warm enough to, to transplant into, but I also, also use it to measure the temperature of the pile. Uh, the pile usually when you make it, at, when you start to turn it, it's gonna heat up and then it's gonna cool down again. And then we wanna get a, to a certain temperature and then it's, when that starts to heat down again, I'll turn it one more time. And then it's gonna kick the process back in heats it up, it kills all the seed weeds, uh, weed seeds, weed seed kills all the weed seeds, and it just activates all the microorganisms that are working at decomposing the organic matter in the pile. They're transforming that into compost, which is gonna take you know, years to decompose in our soils. It's gonna add fertility, it's gonna add organic matter. It's building the house of the soil and it's the food shed also of the soil. So compost is amazing. Can't say enough good things about it. And again, making great compost, you know, it's, it's an art. There's probably people that are doing a thousand times better than I am, but this is good enough for me and it works. I'll show you the, the, the end, the end uh, result. So this is my finished pile. Well, once my pile is done, I just cover it with straw so that it doesn't leach uh, when it rains. And you know, if you open it, it, it looks really good here. That's the end product. And you see here, that's something that I wanted to talk about. Like, so this is like on this farm, this farm is not certified organic. So in Canada, the, this, this is the paper from the paper pot transplanter. And in Canada, you can't use that, the paper pot if you're certified organic. In the US you can, in France you can, but, and there's, you know, for many years, there's discussion about the paper in the paper pot. and. 
like from my experience then it's taking a long time for this paper to decompose and I'm actually thinking that next time I'll throw it in the garbage because this is you know this is you know this is not what I want in my compost but you see it's pretty nice has a nice feel to it um, it's not like compost when I buy it where it's all graded and and uh, filtered but it's definitely good enough. That's good stuff. So that's what's going to go in my garden. And that was turned two times and it was all mixed with layers. So we're working with layers. So we put green stuff and then we put brown stuff over it to cover it. It's like, again, like the outhouse, like that's, that's the, uh, like, you, you, you know, you always cover your poo-poo with some, uh, some brown stuff. And then I come in, I put a little bit of straw, I put a little of soil and I put all the other amendments and then I layer like that. And then eventually I just turn it and then it's going to activate the heating process. And I'll do that twice. Once that's done, I bring it here. I cover it with straw and then that's ready to go when I need it. And I'm pretty happy. Like I'm pretty happy with the result. Check it out. This looks pretty, pretty healthy compost. Like I haven't looked at it in a microscope or anything like that. I think like, I'm not, geeking out to that point but i'm happy because this is all made from food food waste from the restaurant and so it's like a really it's a 360 circle where what comes in comes out what comes in comes out we're keeping everything on site and i think that's really cool like there's a lot of you know when i got into farming like i was really into self-sufficiency and that was the whole wow my whole mindset was that I ended up being more of a market gardener than a, a homesteader or, you know, a 100% closed loop person. But with the restaurant here, it's really coming back. All these synergies of, you know, feeding the restaurant with, with the produce from the farm and then having the waste in the compost and then having that feed the farm. There's, there's a lot of things that could be done with the fact that we have, you know, the river the riverbed is right here and there's a, what's the, oh, the, uh, the waterfall? Yeah, the, the, dam. the dam. There's a dam here just in front of the farm. Uh, I think we could do something with hydroelectricity. Uh, you know, I'm excited about all these things. And uh, yeah, this is an adventure that's gonna be, like I think the modern homesteader, it's perhaps going to be in a city or in a small village or in a town using the synergies of everything that's there. But that's, that's for another story. Compost looks pretty nice, pretty happy with it. Check it out. And so that's my process. And then this morning, I'll just kind of do what I do. You'll see uh, how I operate. Again, this is not a how-to video. I'm just sharing how happy I am about doing compost. This is kind of the first few years that I do this and it's exciting. Wonder bra. Ah, favorite composting moment of all time. Some years ago, I was visiting Elliot Coleman in Maine and it was amazing. He had this really nice pile. It was about, it was about, you know, 10, 10 by 20 about four or five feet high, all made with straw bales. Had all his waste in there, but he was also going to the beach, getting some seaweeds. And then we were harvesting seaweeds and putting in that in the compost pile. That was such an epic moment. Uh, I think I have a video of this. I'll try and see if I can find it, but. Hey Elliot, I think, uh, I'm not sure that you're watching YouTube, but I hope you're well. So the, uh, the, the pile that I start, I always want it to be on somewhat of a starting mix. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close the bale here. Um, and so again, this is, this is going to be the almost finished compost. This is where it's going to be at the second stage, but I'm going to leave it on a, on a pad of soil. And uh, yeah, that's just, and except for that paper. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, the reason why the paper pot's never been allowed in Canada for organic farming is because there's there's acetone in the 
in the paper. It's, it's, it's not that much. It's, it, it's in the glue that holds the, the paper together. But it, it, you know, it was enough for the board, certified board, to rule it out. And again, in France and in the US, it's, it's permitted, so who's right, who's wrong, I don't really know. And the paper pot is pretty nice. Like, it's a tool that I like. But in my opinion, it's not as game-changing as some people advertise it. It's good, it's like one tool that you want in your toolbox. But, you know, I like it for crops like beets and spinach that are really, really seeded densely, transplanted densely. But besides that, like when you're working on 50 foot beds, even 100 foot beds, like two people, they can go do it pretty fast to transplant, so yeah. See, it's already alive so this is the first time that we flip it and when you look at the ther thermometer uh, it's it's active that's what we want so that's great I'll, I'll keep measuring it and if I'm not reaching the temperatures I'll turn it a more and and we'll get to desired state we'll flip it a few times once it reaches the hot temperature twice you know I'll be happy and then that's going to be the end game um, so if you want to learn more about what I do with compost tea you can check out this video uh, otherwise, I hope you guys are well. I'm having a blast here at the old mill. I'll see you next time. JM out.